Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is McClintock coming to you again. This time with a different game. Uh, we're looking at Soul Forge today. Now, Soul Forge is uh, a new uh, digital trading card game uh, by Stoneblade Entertainment. This is the same studio that brought you the Ascension uh, deck building game. And uh, they had a Kickstarter campaign uh, late last year that uh, went off very well. Uh, I myself uh, was a, a backer of that project. And uh, they've recently um, uh, got onto Steam with their uh, early access beta, I suppose you would call it. And uh, before we get into that, I'll just give you sort of the uh, high level overview of what Soulforge is. Now, uh, I should mention off the top that uh, a couple uh, pro Magic players are involved in the uh, development of this game. In addition, they had uh, Richard Garfield as, a, I think, a design consultant in the early stages of development. So there is really a, a lot of firepower behind this uh, design team. And uh, Soulforge. Uh, when the when they did their Kickstarter campaign last year, it uh, the TCG craze was just beginning to heat up again. Um, uh, digital card games were coming back to the forefront, and there was a lot of uh, a lot of these games coming out of the Asian market. They, we started to see a lot of success uh, from Japan and China and Korea. Uh, not exactly the uh, kind of traditional uh, strategic games that we're used to, say with uh, Magic the Gathering or other such games. These games were pretty much the uh, epitome of free-to-play, you know, heavily monetized and uh, built around a lot of uh, grinding and sort of sim simplistic gameplay where uh, you know players would just get addicted to uh, grinding out levels and uh, grinding out uh, new cards and uh, leveling up their cards through grinding or through uh, direct payments. And Soulforge, when, when Soulforge was announced as a Kickstarter, it really was a breath of fresh air. Uh, we had never really seen um, something like this done before where it's like a digital card game made specifically for uh, touchscreen devices. So that was their big push, and uh, they've, they've really uh, designed their mechanics and their interface for the touchscreens first and foremost. Now we're looking at the um, game on PC here, and it works perfectly well with a, a keyboard interface. Uh, sorry, a keyboard and mouse, mainly mouse, let's say. I don't know why I said keyboard. Uh, it works just fine, point and click style. and. Uh, yeah, what I will do now is just give you a, a quick overview of how the game actually plays. Uh, this video really assumes very little uh, prior knowledge of what Soul Forge, Soul Forge is. So, um, if you already know the gist of the game, uh, I've uh, provided a link for you to skip ahead, where we kind of get more into the uh, advanced features such as the deck builder, which they've recently uh, implemented. So. Let's create a game. We're at the main menus here, so we'll create a game. And here I am with my uh, with my decks. So I'm going to pick the starter deck, and I'll use uh, Uterra since I'm most familiar with the uh, Uterans. And then I'm going to well, let's put on normal for now. I'm going to say select random deck. Now this game's been available in uh, early alpha form since the beginning of this year, and uh, since then and up to now, uh, there's on there've only been offline play against uh, computer AI. So the whole idea of Soulforge is very similar to Magic: The Gathering. You play as uh, a, a mage type of character. They call them Forgeborn in this universe. And you are capable, capable of summoning creatures, casting spells, and you battle another Forgeborn player. So as you can see here, my opponent is up at the top, uh, uh, highlighted by these uh, five uh, 
red slots and you see the portrait up here. I'm at the bottom and you can see this is my hand of cards. There's always a, a hand of five cards. And right off the bat, uh, I just want to mention that there is no resource system in Soul Forge. This is a pretty radical departure from other uh, TCGs. And I'm just going to illustrate to you what this means. So this is the first turn. So um, the opponent has taken their first turn. Now the, the player who takes the very first turn of game can only play one card. Typically you get to play two cards per turn. So again, notice that there's no resource systems whatsoever. I can play whichever card I want from my hand. So I like this Echo Wisp. And what this guy does for me is I play one Echo Wisp and I can put in another Echo Wisp and one free uh, lane beside the first one. So now I got two guys out. These rings mean that uh, essentially they have summoning sickness. Um, or, uh, or in uh, Soul Fort is uh, terminology, they're uh, on the defense. And now I played my first card, which ended up being two cards. I can play my second one. So for my second one, I'm going to... Hmm, let's double click this guy. Oh, what do we have here? Here we see essentially um, Soul Forge's key game mechanic and essentially a resource system where all the cards in the game level up within the course of a match. So when you start the game, all the cards start at level 1. And if you play a card, it goes back into your deck and it gets leveled up. So that when you level up as the player, you're able to play the leveled up version of the card that you played previously. And this is how the game controls the pace and the progression of a match. It's very interesting and it's very unique. Let's just play this card. And I'll just uh, put him here. So once you've played your cards, all you can do is battle. So that means anyone who's any one of your creatures that's capable of attacking will just attack whoever's in front of them, or whoever is across from them in the lane. Now, since everyone here is on the defensive, nothing's going to happen. So I'm just going to click battle. Nothing happens. There's a prompt that tells me to finish. Tap the end turn button, which I'm going to do here. So whatever cards I didn't play in that last turn get shoved back into the deck, and I draw a brand new hand of five cards. So things happen really quickly in, in this game, and sometimes there's a lack of feedback as to what had just happened. The, the, the computer may play a spell and it just shows up for just a split second before it goes away and you kind of have to really... you do have to pay attention and have a fair bit of experience with the game. I played, played a few matches to, to realize what had just happened. So, it's my next turn. All three of the guys I put out last turn have the you know, the rings are gone, which means now they can attack. Uh, the turn um, the turn structure is actually really simple. Like, um, like the previous turn, I could just play two cards, one after the other, and when I'm done that, I could click battle, and my guys will fight, and then I'll end the turn. Or I could actually fight first, and then play two cards, or play one card, fight, and then play my second card. So there's a lot of flexibility there. It's really simple. You're not dealing with all these different phases. Uh, there's a lot of elegance to the system, which I really like, and it also makes the play uh, very quick, which is, uh, I'm sure, one of their uh, design goals when they designed this to be a game that you would play on the go on your iPad, right? So here I am. Um, all my three guys can attack, and now. Uh, as is typical for these type of games, uh, each of these creatures has uh, a power rating, an attack rating, and uh, health. I think they call it just uh, attack and defense in this game. So things line up pretty easily. Uh, these Echo Wests will do 7 points of damage. So this Echo West is going to do 7 points of damage and kill this Glow Stride Stag. 
In turn, the Glow Strike Stag would do three points of damage uh, to the Echo Wisp and kill him. And that's going to happen this turn because you cannot avoid combat. You always have to battle, right? You can see down here the battle button's ready for me to click it. So my Echo Wisp can attack. Automatically, my Glow Stride Stag is uh, the opponent's Glow Stride Stag. Sorry, is on defense, and they're just going to kill each other. My Echo Wisp here in the second lane is going to attack unopposed. That seven damage is going to go straight to the computer opponent up here. You can see it has gone up to 105 life. Um, should have mentioned that the, both players start at 100 life, and uh, then the, the aim is essentially to whittle down the other guy to zero. Then you win the match. And I should also point out that uh, this meter, this green meter at the side, the portrait, is the uh, level up meter. So essentially, every time you play a card. You, uh, you build up some um, XP or some energy. And once you play enough cards, typically it's, I think, uh, you have to play four cards before you level up. So I have to play, play out basically this turn. And then I should be leveled up to level two. At that point, any cards that have leveled up from being played previously, if they show up in my hand, I can play the that leveled up version of the card. So this will become apparent as I play through this match and I'll, I'll just sort of speed it up a bit and kind of just let you watch and see how it goes. So I got a chance to uh, just swing in Echo S. My uh, pack master here is going to kill the dr dr Dryad. Um, their deep branch prowler is going to be able to hit me for seven. So I don't know if I want to block him or just let him through and I'm going to put on my own glow stride stag. Once this thing guy, once this guy comes in, I gain 5 life. Or I could put out these guys. There's a 50% chance of being able to put a copy of this guy. So let's try our luck. Oh nice. Nice, we're in a good spot here, and then I'm going to boost up everyone's power and health. Attack and health. Okay, so that's what they call it. So this is nice. So first of war, level one. Each creature you control gets plus one attack and plus one health. If you were to play the second level version, each creature you control gets plus three attack, plus three health. And the final evolution of it is each creature you control gets plus five attack, plus five health and gains Breakthrough. Now Breakthrough is this version of Trample. Is this game's version of Trample, I'm sorry. As you can see here, yeah, while well, on the offensive damage, an excess of an opposing creature's health is dealt to the opponent. In other words, Trample from Magic. I'm gonna play that. So, yes. Okay. Now I've played all the spells I can this turn, so all I can do is battle and see what happens. Okay, so this guy's a tough bugger, because he's got armor. I'm sorry, he... never mind, he has breakthrough as well. So I am taking uh, damages leaking over into me every time this guy attacks through someone. Why did I think he had armor? Any case, my turn is done. So actually, yeah, it's going to be a bit long before I level up, probably after my next turn. So it's my turn again. We're um, we're almost even. I'm I'm slightly behind on life, but at this point I'm not too worried. As you can see here, I have a soothing radiance, so I can gain four life, and I can heal four damage from each creature I control. Now the wording is strange. Now do I heal four damage to each creature I control, or is or do I just heal more life if I have more creatures out? Interesting. So, I'm going to put an end to this guy's Reign of Terror. And I'm going to... What does this Savant do? <laughs> okay. This guy is nice. Buffs my other creatures. That thing is... does nothing. 
at the, the first level. Just the bo just the body, and it's not a very strong one. At that with only four attack and six health. I think I would like to try out the soothing radiance. So yeah, I just gained four health, and yes, it will attempt to heal my creatures. Cool. Okay, so I'm gonna battle. And end the turn. I'm surprised my Echo Wisp here is still alive. These guys usually don't last too long because they start off with one health. So my opponent, typically uh, if you're gonna start, if you're gonna go first in the match, you're gonna level up first. So the uh, computer did go first this turn, this match, and so now she's at level two. I'm almost there, I just basically need to just play out this turn. Toxic Spores. Poison 3, okay. So it just does recurring damage each turn. Yeah. Just, just a really cool system. You're not gonna get into a, a situation of mana of mana screw, as they call it in magic, or being mana flooded, of having too many resources and not enough spells to play. Uh, anything you get in your hand, you can play it right away. And the, and the real strategy comes in when you're trying to plan out which cards you want to use in the moment to defend yourself or to press the attack. But you're also looking in the long view where it's like, well, these are the cards I want to get stronger. I want to level up these cards, so when I level up and these cards get back into my hand, I have a more powerful version to play. And so you get into a situation where you're not exactly using all the cards in your deck. You're cycling through uh, a lot of cards in your deck within a match, but you're not using all of them. You're really focusing on, on a handful of these cards. So the dynamic here is really interesting compared to a more traditional uh, TCG game that has a more traditional resource system. Uh, okay, so um, I need some more creatures out. I'm being outnumbered here. So this person... Uh, okay. Buffs someone else who comes in. What does this guy do? Nothing. He's just... Uh, just evolved into a very uh, huge uh, creature here. Hmm, and this person will come in and buff someone. Okay. Hmm. I'm a little frozen here, as you can see. So. So we're gonna battle. Taking a lot of damage now. So it's the CPU's turn. I'm just getting mauled right now. Okay, so my hunting pack here has leveled up to level two. So has my soothing radiance. So this is something I may want to use since I'm getting battered here by the uh, CPU's uh, creatures. Hunting pack. Still a 50% chance. So the ability is still the same as in level 1. If you go to level 3, it's still the same. So the guys just get stronger as far as I can tell. Okay. Okay, I think we need... We need some bodies. Oh shoot! I didn't. I didn't get an extra guy. That, that sucks. All right, all right. Ugh. Need some life. Okay. Okay, I'm still getting slaughtered here. We gotta do something about this. Well, both these guys are are serious threats. You know, there's nothing stopping my platform. 
whoring out the uh, the creatures. There's no mana, there's no cost for these things. As long as she gets it in her hand on her turn, she can play it. That put an end to him. And hmm, actually that was silly. I should have not I should have done that. Uh, this guy's getting really strong. Uh, I need to clear away some of these guys. Yeah, I'm 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 almost dead here. Not the best game of Soul Forge I played, but uh, hoping that I'm uh, giving you a good sense of how the game is played. Does it play it well? You shouldn't use this as an example, for sure. I'm just all right. Let's just put them there and uh, whew. yeah, I'm just I'm just laying things out randomly now. I'm pretty much done. There's no way I can come back. Deep in the hole here. Yeah. All right. So this was just uh, a somewhat quick tutorial on the rules of Soul Forge, how to play. Now, uh, I really just wanted to take the rest of the time to show you the deck builder. This is a brand new thing, and uh, if you were a Kickstarter backer, uh, this is all. This is also a new feature. Since the game was released as a demo on the App Apple App Store earlier this year, uh, we've only had a chance to play with uh, pre-constructed decks. And uh, later on, we were able to purchase other uh, pre-constructed decks. So since then, I've bought um, the Uteran uh, starter deck, which is uh, which cost me about five dollars. And um, now that they've uh, gone into Steam, and the game is on sale now uh, on off Steam for twenty dollars. It's it's what they call the uh, Steam Early Access. So uh, they've opened up the uh, deck builder to everyone, and um, along with that, they've uh, temporarily uh, unlocked all the uh, cards that are in the set. Not only that, they've uh, included uh, multiples of each of the cards, so they really want to get. They really want to encourage people to get in there and start building decks and not have to worry about uh, not having enough cards or, or uh, thinking that they have to like pay even more money off, off, off the bat just to get more cards in order to build their own custom decks. This is a good thing. In addition to uh, getting this early access, you know, $20 is not uh, uh, an insig insignificant amount of money these days, especially for a game that's being marketed as a free-to-play game. Soulforge is a free-to-play game with uh, microtransactions. So for your $20 to get into the uh, early access, sure you're going to play the game early, you're going to use the deck builder with the unlock cards, but uh, you're also going to get f uh, 20 free booster packs when the game finally goes live. And this bonus is being pushed retroactively to all the uh, Kickstarter backers. So that's awesome news. Since I, I backed the project uh, last year, I, I was uh, one of the $15 backers. So my perk was, you know, I'd get a custom avatar, I'd uh, uh, get early access, and uh, I'd get uh, five free boosters. Which at the time seemed okay. But now, I have another 20 to look forward to, which is superb. Can't complain about that. That's estimated to be about a $40 value, those uh, 20 booster packs. So if you're really intrigued by the game and you really like it, this is a, a terrific time to get involved uh, with Soul Forge. So new feature, deck builder. In the time that I spent with this thing so far, I do have to say it's a little bit rough. It's it's functional. Um, I had issues with uh, the deck building interface from uh, Magic Duels of the Planeswalkers, which uh, I've done a whole bunch of fe uh, video features of recently. That thing looks extremely slick compared to this guy, but maybe I just need to spend more time using this. Uh, to really understand or to really just see the uh, beauty and the simplicity. So what I did recently was I, I built myself a deck. 
So uh, if I can just load it up here. Here's my deck. Biggins. Now it's going to take a while to load. Okay. So Biggins is a Uteran and a Necrium deck. And it's, it's really much... Uh, built around this one creature, the Grimgaunt Devourer. Now this guy simply gets bigger as the game goes along. As you can see here, when a creature is destroyed, the Grimgaunt Devourer gets plus one attack and plus one health. So if you can keep this guy alive, he gets huge. Hence the name Biggins. Also, I am a, a, a gigantic man-child, so excuse me for the, uh, the poor taste in my deck name. Uh, yeah, so the Groom Got Devourer, awesome card, and uh, it's been awesome since uh, day one. They haven't really done any tuning on it, as far as I can tell. So I thought, why not? Let's let's base the deck around this guy, more or less. So a quick explanation of the different factions. So you can see here, we can do a filter. Let's see, okay, we're not. This is our card collection up in the top frame. So we want to look at all the Necroom cards. Here they are. We just want to look at creatures. So we disable the spells filter. So now we're just looking at creatures in our card collection. Now we can look at Uteran creatures and Necroom creatures. And I suppose these guys will help us sort through the uh, level information. Although it's a little wonky right now. When you click on a card, it kind of shows you an overlay and close-up of the card. Okay, I see. Let's see here. So, when we click on it, it showed us the level 2 version of the card. So, when I click levels here, it's only going to show a level 1 version right off the bat. But, you can just take your mouse cursor click and hold and then drag and you can see all three levels. This I think is really awkward. They really need to find a way to use the screen real estate more to maybe put a subdivide it into a third region where you click a card and it will just show you in a dedicated frame all the all three levels of that card. You don't need to uh, have this awkward overlay come up and then you have to click and then they have this cancel button here which I think is awkward but you don't need to click it anyway you can just click off the card art and you're back into the uh, main screen so in any case I've already built the deck using the cards from the Necrium and Uterra and I got off track I was going to explain to you what these factions are so let's start with the Aloyan uh, you can think of these guys as the humans and cyborgs. Uh, it's a technology-based faction. Uh, this faction provides the sci-fi flair in the Soulforge universe, which I think is pretty cool. So as you can see here, we have a Sparkbot. It's essentially a robot that gets larger. Technosmith. When you play Technosmith, you may discard a card and level it. So. Um, Play mechanics of this faction um, focus on building up your power. It is a real slow burn sort of faction. They aren't the most powerful right out of the gate, but if you can nurture your forces, as you can see, this general, he, he will buff the guys beside him, which is really uh, awesome. So, yeah, this faction, uh, if you can sort of survive the early uh, blitz from your opponent and build up your cards properly. It really, really encourages you to really plan out your uh, card progression and your card leveling. Once you get to a stage where you start laying out level 2 and level 3 versions of the cards, you are very strong using this faction. <clears throat> Next is the Tempest. Uh, Tempest are very uh, aggressive minded uh, faction. They have a lot of direct damage. Uh, the guys themselves do a lot of damage. Um, haven't played a whole lot of this faction to really say too much. I've noticed that. Um, so I'm trying to find. Yeah, so this guy. When you play Magma Hound, you may have it deal two damage to target creature and opponent controls, and this uh, damage just keeps scaling up. 
as you level up the Magma Hound. So, uh, a very aggressive faction. And uh, mobile, too. I believe uh, you have this guy who can move other creatures on the, uh, on the board. And then you got guys like this who have swiftness, which is Soul Forge's version of haste. So once you play this guy, he doesn't start in a defensive posture, he can attack right away. So yeah, high aggression, high speed, Tempest faction. Necrium, and these guys are your uh, evil, undead um, faction. Zombies, evil sorcerers, or necromancers, weird, you know, zo uh, you know zombie mutant things. Spirits. Also, um, very aggressive, similar to Tempest, although some of their uh, cards will harm you as well as harming your opponent. So there is uh, a lot of power, but that power comes at a cost. And yes, the Gloom Gaunt Devour, which is just ridiculously awesome. It's worth knowing that when a creature is destroyed, this is any creature. It could be yours or your opponent's. So this guy has gotten really huge when I've used him. He's had his power in the high 20s even. Finally, we have the Uterra faction. Uh, what can I say? These guys are the nature-based faction. The tree huggers. They're about large, powerful creatures. Uh, life gain. Let's see what we've seen before the Glow Stride Stag. Give you health uh, when you put them on the board. Creatures are sturdier, typically. Uh, let's see here. Deep Branch Prowler. Yeah. Let's break through. Yeah, just uh, a lot of tough creatures, and they do some poison as well. We turn on the spells here. See, they have the toxic spores. So all in all, so it breaks down to Eloian. You can think of as white magic and magic. Tempest, red magic. Necrium, black magic. Uterra, green magic. The only thing that's not really represented in a direct parallel to magic is blue magic. And uh, yeah, this is the deck building interface. If we were to start a new deck, we just wipe clean our bottom frame, and all we do is start double clicking things. So I want to build a Tempest, uh, Tempest Uteran deck. I just want to look at creatures. So it'll be, okay, give me three wind primordials. Now you're only allowed three copies of any one card. So, it, uh, yeah, so if you try to put in more and you try to save it, deck build is going to stop you. You also need a minimum of 30 cards in your deck. So there's a little indicator down here that shows you your deck count. As I'm adding cards, you can see the count is going up. Then we have our spells. We just look at Tempest Union Terra. So right now I, I put in uh, 14 cards on my deck. Now if I try to save into a uh, Try to save, it's gonna flash me a warning. Your deck has validation errors. Are you sure you want to save it? The deck cannot contain more than three of card when primordial. A deck must be exactly 30 cards. Oh, okay, so you can't go over 30 cards. But it will still let you save. Well, look at that. Interesting. So I guess you can start building a deck 
it's not gonna have 30 cards in it yet, but you just want to save your progress and come back to finish it off later. So that that's a good thing that they've done here. Not gonna save it. And uh, when you're looking at your own deck, it kind of follows the same structure as going through your card collection. A single click will bring up the uh, blown up view. Double clicking it will take it out of your deck and put it back into your collection. And yeah, again, you can uh, change the level filter so that when you uh, click on a card, it will just zoom straight to that stage of evolution. I really think that there's a better way they can do this. Again, it's all about being more visual, right? We want to have a clear indication of what the card is without having to read too much or recognize them by name. I think as it stands it's just very functional and uh, I'm hoping that they do a lot more optimization with this interface. But enough critique. Let's just load up Biggins, which I put together yesterday. Uh, really simple deck. Uh, lots of creatures. so. So if I could just easily go through, if I could e cycle through each card without having to go through this business, that would be nice too. But I just want to give you a quick rundown of what I put in my deck. And uh, yeah, it's it's all right. We're going to leave deck builder right now, and maybe I will take my deck for a test drive. So we're going to um, create a game. Tutorial here, uh, I've essentially just done the long winded version of the tutorial already with you. You can uh, get rid of it so you never see it again. And you can re-enable it by clicking the load grade button down here. So, hello. Uh oh. Oh. Oh, okay. That had me a bit worried. I've had the game crash me once already. It could still be. No. We're good. We are good. So, Biggins, select. We are going to try our luck again. Let's see if I can defeat the computer on normal, which. Shouldn't be too hard. Um, the normal difficulty used to be very, very easy. Um, easy was extremely easy. They're essentially uh, a punching bag. Normal, you could pretty much beat it if you had done the tutorial and played the practice game. And hard was extremely difficult. Um, now they sort of move the uh, the needle a bit on normal, where they've kind of upped the difficulty of normal and they've decreased the difficulty of heart, so they kind of centered things a bit more balance-wise. So, um, who should I choose for the computer? I'll just do a random deck, and then we're going to play. Let's see how my custom deck does. Something else to mention uh, when you're deck building is that you can build a single faction deck, or you can build a two faction deck. Now I got really excited when I first heard about the deck builder and uh, realizing that there's no resource system. So there were no, as I thought to myself, oh there are no constraints to what cards I can put in my deck. I can sprinkle in the best cards from each of the factions. Unfortunately that's not the case. They put some restrictions so that deck power doesn't get out of hand. Their job of balancing the game doesn't get out of hand. So they've really restricted you to just one or two factions per deck. So, that's a little unfortunate, but I can understand why they went in that direction. I go first, so I only get to play one card. I'm going to play my favorite card here, the Goomgaunt Devourer. Battle does nothing, just tells it in a turn. Now, another thing here, if nothing's going to happen in the battle, it should just end the turn for me. I understand why they might want to just call out each of the phases of the turn, but having to just click and then click again, nothing's happening on the screen, it's it's sort of weird. So 
So it looks like I'm playing the uh, Aloyan starter deck. That'd be my guess. So we have here the Bright Steel Sentinel. This guy is going to give armor to all his robot buddies. Armor is, uh, yeah, it soaks up the first X number of damage that's dealt to the creature. It can be pretty powerful. Technosmith, which we saw in the deck building interface, just lets you cycle cards out of your hand in order to level them. This is very powerful if you know how to use it. So, what am I gonna do? Well, I can play two cards this turn. I forgot what the savant does. Nothing on the first level. So, if I play a, a, a card that's of a lower level than this guy, I can have a target creature get a minus two attack and minus two health, and that will buff up to minus four and a minus minus four attack, minus four health. That's all right. Something I could invest in. What I want to do is I want to enrage my. I'll show you what enrage does. It's essentially a giant growth. Target creature gets plus three attack, plus three health, and that will just get higher and higher as it goes along. I want to protect my Grimgaunt Devourer, so I want him to survive combat. So I boost them up, so now he's an 8 6. He's going to handle this uh, Bright Steel Sentinel just fine. I also want to uh, get rid of the Techno Smith. Ooh, the game's chugging a little bit right now. Okay, he's already kind of like gotten the benefit from playing the Techno Smith. Techno Smith, excuse me. I could use Call the Weak. Maybe I will. I'll just get rid of him. Call the Weak is just a straight up kill a creature spell. So now I've killed this guy, and you can see my Grim Gun Devourer has gone stronger. He's up one point on each attack and health, which I like very much. And we're going to battle now and destroy the Bright Steel Sentinel. Come on. And again, he gets stronger. the turn. Ah, my next hand is looking nice. I got two Echo Wisp. Ah, so he, very wisely the CPU decided to take care of my Grimgaunt Devourer. That's okay though, I have another one. I'm gonna play Echo Wisp up here. Quickly gonna clone him to the next lane. And I could play uh, Grove Huntress, and I could pump up the attack and health of my Echo Wisps. Uh, something tells me that's not a big enough boost. Uh, on, on the CPU's turn, she's probably going to put up blockers for the Echo Wisps. So that extra point boost, is, I don't think it's going to make a huge difference. It's definitely not going to bleed over for damage to... Um, the, uh, the player directly, my opponent directly. Hmm. I'm going to put out another two. Yeah. There's no, uh, there's no battle since everyone's on the defensive. So that, that's my turn. So yeah, I mean, if you're not, uh, if you're not like me and just talking a lot, trying to explain the game, and mulling over every little decision. Uh, a game of Soul Forge can play very quickly. There's not too much that goes on per turn. Uh, just, you know, having that limitation of two cards, you play two cards per turn, really makes for a fast playing game. Okay, this guy's got armor plating. So, whatever damage they do, minus one. So he's still gonna die when he gets in a fight with my Echo Wisp, which is cool. So I can work on sort of like improving my board presence here with the Cavern Hydra. This guy regenerates. Uh, so every turn, this heals one damage from itself. It's interesting wording. And at its best, he can heal five damage. 
And I'm going to enrage this Echo Wisp. I want to start doing damage to my opponent. We're gonna battle. Come on. Alright. So, got my opponent down to 91 health. I'm still saying 100. I'm in a good spot. I'm gonna end the turn. So as you can see my deck, very creature focused, uh, trying to support my creatures as much as possible, pump them up, get a lot of them out, hopefully overwhelm my opponent. I got my uh, level 2 Enrage now, nice. Got this Ferocious Roar, uh, Ferocious Roar, pardon me, uh, which uh, does like a mini mini version of uh, the Enrage, but it affects all my creatures. A hungering Strike. Target creature you control gets plus two attack. Target creature an opponent controls gets minus two attack. Pretty neat. Haven't used this card too much, maybe I'll try it out now. So this guy is going to chip away at my Cavern Hydra. I can make life more difficult for him by doing the hungering Strike. So I buffed up my Cavern Hydra, and I now want to um, debuff this uh, Savant here. Savant. What does this guy do? Nothing here, but once he gets into level 2, when you play a level 1 card, you may have target creature you control get armor 2. Okay, this guy's pretty neat. Definitely a support unit. He will die this turn. And I'm gonna keep pouring on the hurt. Oh, I already played my two cards. I thought I could play an enrage. We're gonna battle. Actually, it's good that I wasn't able to play enrage. I was gonna try and put it on the Echo Wisp, but the Echo Wisp cannot attack. That would have been a huge waste. Right, end the turn. Match is still pretty even. I haven't done a whole lot of damage to the CPU. Things are going to change very quickly. So they're level two bright steel sentinel. So what the CPU could have done is played the Technosmith first, and then played the bright steel sentinel. Then they could have. Oh wait. But this only affects robots. Is this guy considered a robot? No, he's a creature. I mean, a human creature. So you do see some um, similarities to magic cards here, where it's like, name of the card, nice, gorgeous art in the center, followed by a, a, a thin strip that shows you the type of card it is, the type of creature, and then just like the card text. Yeah, speak of the art, the game looks very nice, looks gorgeous. If you can play it on your iPad, uh, it, it's really a, one of the best looking games on a mobile device. And uh, one thing I like about the cards is that um, there's a consistency to the art. Every card looks like um, it was either done by the same artist or done by a core group of artists that have a very similar style. And I think that really, in, in the early going at least, it really helps push the identity of this game really well. And uh, I think consistency is really important when it comes to uh, card art. So, we are still in a commanding position. We have some really good cards on our hand. <clears throat> going to cull this guy. So he's gone, just like that. And uh, Grove Huntress, Grove Huntress. Do I need it? Put out another Cavern Hydra. Put him out over here. Bring out battle. We are doing really well. CP's down at 69, I'm still at 100. I am playing a lot better this time. Probably because I'm not 
tripping over myself trying to explain every little facet of the uh, the game rules. Okay. Oh, two call the weeks. This is awesome. Unfortunately, there are the level one versions, so I cannot use this to get rid of uh, their ionic war charger. This guy can move around. It seems once per turn while on the offensive, this. This may move to an available space up to one lane away. Okay. We have to get rid of this guy. Yeah, I can't use Call of the Week on either of these guys right now. Fortunately, I'm still in a very commanding position. I can keep boosting. I'm just sort of... The, f the further I get in the match, the less relevant a guy like this becomes, since I just have to start building him up from his weak state. And, uh, you know, by the time I get him to his second level, it may be too late. So, you, this, this is definitely a consideration you need to uh, think about as you play your cards. It's not just about what's going to give you the uh, quick. Uh, the quick solution, the the instant feedback, but whether you know whether you want to grow something into a long-term strategy. Uh, let's see here. I don't know if he this guy's gonna move next turn or not. Uh, but I'm going to start uh, messing with his attack. I'm gonna boost up my cavern hydra. And then, uh, should I just gain some life? No, I'll put out this guy. If he moves, I'll have this guy ready for him to just block. Yeah. So now that uh, my guy has suicided himself because he had to attack, this uh, war charger might just hold, uh, stay still on his turn. And that's it, that's my turn. Next hand of cards could be better. I only have one level two card to play. But you can see here now, uh, my opponent has a whole bunch of level two cards, and I, I think that is uh, we can attribute that to the techno smith that uh, the CPU has been playing the the previous turn. So now she's just been leveling cards out of her hand, and now uh, she's able to reap the benefits. So now she has very strong creatures right out of the gate. And I need to, in a sense, play catch up. Not not in terms of life total. I'm ahead on the life total, but uh, just in terms of commanding the board again, I have a lot of catching up to do. So let's play our strong card, Echo S. We need to get a blocker up and do some damage. So, uh, yeah, we can the kibosh on both these uh, sentries. And then we can also block the war charger here, and it's gonna pretty much do a hard reset. Oh no, these guys will not fight each other. So it's gonna it's gonna put the uh, war back to a parity state. Yeah, and I'm gonna end the turn. I leveled up. This is my actually your level is not capped. I should say. So the cards are capped at level 3. You as a player, you can keep leveling up. Which is sort of nice, although eventually... Yeah, the reason they do that is that uh, in the late stages of the game, you can continue to level up all your cards. So if you had a bunch of uh, level 1 cards still and you're playing those, you can still level those up. You're not capped in any way. So it's good that they thought of that. I got two level 2 cavern hydras, which I, I like seeing. And I have an enrage. Okay, things are looking good. So what I could do here is... Hmm. Sentry is really weak. Oh, look. I have my uh, Dark Shaper Savant. But see, he only he can only use his power on something that's of a lower level, and I don't have that. So 
really does take a bit of finesse to use a card like this. Apparently finesse I do not yet have. Hmm. We are in the lead, so we don't actually have to concern ourselves with blocking a whole lot. Although I will block this guy. Battle. I'm taking some damage now, I'm down to 80. I still got double the uh, life that uh, the CPU has, so I'm, I'm still in a good place. Oh boy, look at this. She's got her level 3 card out. 20 health. Oosh. Even if I enrage him, it's not going to be enough. But I will, yeah, I will take the Bright Soul Central down to 10 health if I wanted to, if I wanted to use the enrage on the Hydra. She, as you can see, is catching up on her damage to me. Oh, I have the level 2 enrage. I boost up to 12 damage. That'd be okay. Uh, I'm going to do this. And I'm going to do this. Hopefully, I can get the Echo Wisp through for some damage. I, I always get into this trap of thinking that the uh, Echo Wisp has a... Uh... Oh boy, look at that. We are even now, and uh, I'm actually in a very bad spot now. All her creatures are so strong. Huh. Okay. This guy can be killed, but I just have to do um, at least four points of damage to him since he's got the armor. Oh, wait, I may have to do more than that. Ooh, boy, I need to do six points of damage to him. Because he's got armor three. Right? Yeah. So I will have to use this guy. And, okay, yeah, I might just lose this match, too. This sucks. Hmm. Hmm is right. Some life game might be useful, though. Four is not going to do too much for me. I think I'd rather block someone. Yeah. Yeah, I am... This is, uh, this is a really... yeah, I think I might just... Ooh. It might be game over for me. Oh yeah. Look at look at all that power that just came in on that last turn. Wow. Okay, looks like I got cocky. There you have it though. Um, Soul Forge. Very fun game. It's uh, still in its uh, beta phase. You can get early access on Steam for $20. Um, with that, you'll have access to all the cards they've created so far. You'll be able to build decks using those cards. They haven't mentioned how long the, uh, the limited uh, access will um, you know, last for. But yeah, if this interests you, it's uh, something you could uh, definitely check out. Um, looks like uh, that's going to wrap up the video. Thank you very much for watching. This is McClintock signing out. See you next time.